Hi, my name is Gunnar, and today I wanted to talk about my top five favorite plants. I've been taking the houseplant hobby a bit more seriously the last three years, I would say. We probably have anywhere between 50 and 70 plants, but I do think in time I've had over 100 different types of plants. So there's a lot I've learned over the years, but for me personally, I do prefer plants that are pretty middle temperament. These plants that I'm going to talk about today are a mixture of easy to take care of as well as unique looking plants. I didn't want all the plants I'm talking about today to all look the same, so I tried my best at giving you five different types of plants that you can try out in your house. The first plant I want to talk about today is the only one that's like a tree, but I love the Norfolk Island Pine. It comes from a territory in Australia. It usually does really well with soil that's going to be staying kind of in the middle ground. Not too dry, not too wet, just kind of sits in the middle. I usually water mine every other week. The one that I'm showing you on the screen right now is over 25 years old. They last a long, long time and they can grow fast or slow depending on how much you're changing that plant pot. You know, so fertilizing and all those other things. So this plant, I think, is actually fairly easy to take care of. The only thing is, one time I tried to move it, and I moved it to an area that wasn't very sunny, and it hated me. It was not happy, and half of it died, and now it's been like three years later, and it's kind of rebounding back, but it did take a bit of time for it to mellow out again. This plant can have up to three to six inches of growth a year. So it's a little bit more of a slow grower, but when we did get it, it was probably only like six inches to 12 inches tall. So it has grown a ton in the time that we've had it. The next plant that I want to talk about is the Philodendron Xanadu. The Xanadu is a bit more of a unique looking plant. The Xanadu is probably my newest plant out of all the plants I'm talking about today. I've had it for about a year and a half now. I think I bought it on Etsy, I want to say, because I couldn't find it at any of my plant stores. I love the shape of the leaf. I find this to be a really easy one to take care of. It's done really well in almost a full sun spot. It's done really well in a partially shady spot. It does prefer to be in bright indirect light, so that does mean it has a little bit of variation that you can give it. And also a really important thing that I found with this plant is it loves to be watered really heavily and then have that fully dry out, and then water it heavily, and then let the soil fully dry out, and then water it heavily, like, keep up that routine, and this plant will love you. This plant is native to Brazil, and by the end of its growth, it can be up to three to five feet tall. So it can be a very, very big plant if you have it in the right spot or the right type of pot. The next one I want to talk about is the Hoya pubicalix. I, first of all, do not like this name, but second of all, I love Hoyas. I don't find them to be the easiest to take care of because a lot of my environments are not human enough, but I think this Hoya does really well in any type of environment, as long as it's not super, super dry. This plant originates from the Philippines and it has a succulent foliage, but then also it's a vining plant. A lot of the vining plants that I own have very round shaped leaves, where this one has a really gorgeous, um, almost like a feather-like leaf. Since this is a vining plant, you definitely want to have some support for the plant. Either it's a wall or a trellis or something to help it grow up and it will love you. By the end, it can be around 8 to 10 feet in full growth, which is insane when you really want to think about that. Mine sits on a south-facing window. Actually, it's in almost fully direct sun for a few hours of the day. Some of the leaves do turn that red color because they're burning in the sunlight, but overall it does a really nice job on that window side and there's tons of growth since I've had it. The next one I want to talk about is the Philodendron in Brazil. The Philodendron in Brazil is actually originated from Central America and the Caribbean. I have no idea why it's called Brazil if it's not from Brazil, but it does prefer a bright and direct sunlight area. I have mine in the perfectly bright and direct spot and it loves me. It is growing a ton, a ton, a ton. I just recently repotted mine as well. So as soon as you are seeing the growth kind of start to get stunted, then you want to pot it up. 
and just keep expanding that pot and you'll keep continuously getting that growth on that plant if that's what you want. This plant can have up to four inches of growth per week, which I think is insane thinking about. I'm scared for what summer is gonna bring for growth. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep up with it. By the end, these can get up to 13 feet long, which is insane. My last plant that I wanna talk about was the Peperomia scandens. I love this plant too so much. I keep saying that over and over and over, but overall, this plant has been in our family, I think 40, 50, I don't think 60 years, but in that 40 to 50 years probably. It is a vining plant, but at the same time, it's a little different to the filled in Brazil and like the pothos where those really love to cling uh, onto things and trellis like up it, uh, grow around. This one could do that, but at the same time, what I noticed with this is a lot of times the growth just immediately shoots straight up and then when it can't take that anymore, it starts falling. Where a lot of my other plants, they'll just start trailing down first and then just go wherever they want to go. But this one has such a thick stem that they tend to just go straight up. I bet you could make a trellis for this to make it look better. I have just seen that it does really well on its own without it, so you don't need it. This is probably the plant that I've found the easiest to propagate. You can make millions and millions and millions of little plants with this big plant. I think in my family we've split and propagated this plant over six times, so there's tons of little babies that have been spread out to different areas. <laughs> this one is also native to Central and South America, so another one that likes a little bit of higher humidity, but at the same time it can do pretty well in any environment. It likes a partly sunny area. It can also go towards like the middle of a room. It doesn't have to be right next to it in direct sunlight. So it is a pretty resilient plant. And we've also almost killed it a few different times. The leaves have been turning yellow, all that type of thing. The leaves have been turning yellow a few different years when we take care of it in the winter, but at the same time, it always bounces back. If, and also bounces back even better than it was before. Super easy to take care of, so I recommend it for anyone. I would love to hear what you think about these plants that I was talking about today in the comments down below, as well as hear what your favorite plants are too, if you're interested. Thanks for taking the time to watch today's video, and I hope you have a good day.